Storm of Darkness, a novel by Chaplain Bob Walker. Introduction to The Time of Sorrows. It had only been a short time since the conflict in the Middle East. Iran had been subjugated and almost completely destroyed. The limited nuclear exchange in the confrontation between the major powers had been the catalyst they needed to create a strong one world government. A plan that had been in the works for probably 200 years or more, or perhaps since the time of the Tower of Babel. The media harped constantly on needing a strong one world government to prevent cataclysmic future wars. Third world banana dictatorships would now have an equal democratic voice in what happened inside the United States, Canada, and the European Union. After all, it had long been said that we could not take the chance of nations fighting nations with the power of atomic weapons being able to destroy the earth. We must have a powerful one world government to prevent these wars once and for all. The newly adopted United Nations UN government now superseded the US Constitution, which was nullified. In the book of Mark, King James Version, chapter 13 and verse 1. And as he, Jesus, and as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples said unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here? And Jesus answering said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be earthquakes in divers places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. Hate speech was mandated illegal under United Nations law, as it was arbitrary and severely punished. Racism and homophobia was to be stamped out forever. Only whites are racists and Christians are homophobes. Anti-Semitism laws were the most harsh and strict. Just saying something against Jews, whether factual or not, was given a mandatory minimum five to ten year prison sentence and retraining. 
In communist Russia, the anti-Semitism laws were the very first laws on the books after the communist Bolshevik revolution. Penalties for violators included imprisonment and oftentimes death. This one world government was the cry of the media around the world with one voice for peace and safety. Of course, not recognizing Jesus, the Prince of Peace. We call to mind the Bible scripture in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 3. For when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Soon after the war in the Middle East, the world economy experienced a total collapse with the massive debt that war causes. When the welfare money ceased, the cities burned with riots. Gone were the days of soup kitchen lines of the last depression of the 1930s. Computer network hackers penetrated the utility grids with the lights and water went off for days. With seared consciousness, people had become barbaric in their quest for survival. It was now every man for himself with mayhem and murder. In the book of Titus, chapter 1 and verse 15, we read the words of Paul. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. In Psalms 917, we read the wicked, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. What could one expect from a culture that kicked Christ out of the schools and courtrooms of America in 1963? When the constant vicious riots ensued, the police got blue flu and called in sick to stay home to protect their own families. The European Union, or EU, was also experiencing these problems with the large refugee and Muslim populations, and their cities were ablaze, according to worldwide, worldwide news sources. Since the police were ineffective, the military was called in to quell the violence. In the U.S., the military was given orders by the new United Nations government to confiscate all private firearms. Some decent men in the military had a problem with shooting U.S. citizens that refused to give up their guns. A few citizens fought back saying, you can pry my gun from my cold, dead hands. Many U.S. troops were more than happy to comply with that request. The president, along with the regional head of the United Nations, decided that U.N. soldiers would be needed to halt the violence and enforce confiscation of all firearms. Anyone caught with a firearm could be shot on sight without trial. Foreign UN troops would not have a problem killing US citizens that refused to comply. Even under the wicked rule of Rome, one was allowed to own a sword in self-defense, as Jesus said in Luke chapter 22 and verse 36. Jesus speaking, 
Then said he unto them, But now he that hath a purse, let him take it, and likewise his script, and he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. Jesus said, Buy a sword, not to kill, but to protect. Chinese and other foreign national troops poured into America, and many were amazed at how quickly they arrived in force. Some claimed they were already here in America and Mexico awaiting orders to deploy. These heartless, soulless troops had no problem with killing U.S. citizens who refused orders from the U.N. world government. The law was that those who concealed a weapon were told that if it was found, the family would lose their property and the owners would be thrown into prison if not shot on the spot. Wives and children were encouraged to turn in their husbands and families or else suffer the same treatment. Wives and mothers turned against their own husbands and sons to be able to remain in their family houses. Criticism of the new United Nations government was punishable by an automatic prison sentence. Food was severely rationed, and most were on an almost starvation diet. Obesity was no longer a problem in America, which had formerly been the land of plenty. Family pets often ended up on the dinner table. The elderly in nursing homes were left to die if their families did not provide for them. After all, someone had to provide food for the millions of United Nations troops occupying America and the third world refugees that were constantly pouring in. Those who snitched and turned in neighbors were given extra food rations and many turned against their neighbors for a mouthful of food. The curse of Esau was replayed many times over in the new America. Distrust and fear swept the nation that was almost devoid of the God of the Bible. Neighbors hated neighbor. Gone were the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 22 and verse 37. Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Many were forced from their homes and moved into UN-mandated communal living accommodations like apartments in a total surveillance state. White privilege was not to be tolerated. Whites were forcefully relocated from their family homes to new multicultural residences, and this was enforced at the end of a bayonet. Whites were removed from virtually all positions of power in the new government and business, this ensuring, this ensuring the obliteration of racism. All new mayors and police chiefs were to be non-whites. The only accepted light skin colored in government and business sported names like Cohen, Goldberg, and Silverstein. They were the only ones that were to have light color of skin in the United Nations government. 
Chinese dictator Mao, the greatest mass murderer in history, said, Power comes out of the barrel of a gun. He knew what he was talking about. Mao killed millions of teachers, businessmen, farmers, landowners, military, and police from the old regime. He wanted no opposition to his plans for his communist paradise of workers. Now the masses understood why the mandate for gun control. The pages of this playbook were used in the U.S. or U.S.S.A. Some whispered quietly. Stalin of the USSR was next as the greatest mass murderer in history, and many of these new UN laws were taken right from the Soviet Union's playbook of tactics. After all, Stalin had murdered millions of Christians with either bullets or starvation and torture. God's wrath against once great America had only just started. With an angry and just God, there are serious consequences for tolerating and promoting sins like sodomy and abortion. The Lord was tired of people playing to church, and it showed. God was tired of people playing church. The Russian church had suffered under Stalin were, was far more righteous in many ways than the American modern churches. Strict curfews were put into law. One had to have a good reason to be out at any time of the day or night, even when not under curfew. Identity cards were mandated to be carried at all times. Cameras were installed everywhere. Unrestricted travel and vacations were now a thing of the past. Churches prior to the United Nations merger were bound to the state with their 501c3 IRS tax-exempt status and their state business charters. Churches were now strictly under government control. New Testament Bibles were considered hate speech. Few understood that churches were mere tax-exempt businesses with the name church in it. Jesus warned in John 15 and 18, If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. The Talmudic Seven Noahide Laws were the new standard of morality and law. These laws were put on the books in the U.S. under President Reagan, but now they were being enforced. These seven laws were allegedly given to Noah. But where is that in the Bible? Nowhere is where. The seven Noahide Laws are as follow. One, not to worship idols. Two, not to curse God. Three, to establish courts of justice. Four, not to commit murder. Five, not to commit adultery. Six, not to steal. Seven, not to eat flesh torn from a living animal. On the surface, these do not sound so bad to a Christian, but the Talmudic rabbis that run the institution of Judaism interpret these laws differently. They consider all Christians guilty of worshiping an idol called Jesus. The punishment is death by beheading. Jesus in Mark 8.35 warned, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel's, the same 
shall save it. In Revelation 20, in verse 4, John writes, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Bitcoin, an electronic currency, was created and manipulated to prepare the masses for 666, the mark of the beast. Cash and checks could no longer be accepted as payment. Bartering in private was outlawed, but was common in the underground economy of bribery of United Nations officials. Food was most valuable and having too much was considered hoarding and was illegal. The UN Refugee Relocation Program was unhindered and millions upon millions of untold third world aliens flooded the borders of the United States and the European Union as well as Canada. Entire villages from heathen Africa and South America were settled in America and purposefully given houses the whites were forced out of. English had become a second or third language in most of the country. We are the world, we are the children, Michael Jackson had sung for UN unity. Yet the God of the Bible warned and demanded separation and segregation and warned of its consequences. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 15, we read, And what concord hath Christ with Belial? And what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate. Hmm. Verse 18. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. The media openly spewed their hatred against whites, for their oppression and colonialism against people of color. Crimes against whites were rarely punished, even if the perpetrator was caught. With the guns gone, crimes against whites was rampant. What had happened to South Africa had come to America and Europe. Rape was becoming a common problem among white women especially those Jezebels who had divorced or turned in their husbands for some offense and now were traveling alone. It was not only the heathens living among us who performed this heinous crime. It was also the UN military who raped and stole anything they wanted at will. Women who dared report these crimes by the UN troops were escorted to the local headquarters for statement and were often never seen from again. Things were dangerous for escorted women. Those who had no escort protection were easy prey. There was a saying, to be an unattractive woman was a blessing. 
It was not uncommon for attractive females to be raped several times in a single day. Whoredom and harlots were given more than they wanted in the judgment of the Lord. No longer did females dare parade around in skimpy attire showing off their bodies. In World War II, the victorious Russian communist troops raped any German wanted they wanted with impunity. Again, it was said that to be an attractive female was a curse. Blessed were you if old, fat, and ugly. Sometimes those women and children were often just killed out of hand. Freedom of speech was outlawed, as was much of the internet, since it was tightly controlled. Christian evangelism was forbidden, even in churches that were state-run. God was allowing Satan to separate the sheep from the goats. The Zionists had destroyed all outside Islamic military opposition to rebuild a temple for animal blood sacrifice. This was sheer blasphemy against what Jesus had done on the cross and former, quote, Christian, unquote, TV preachers praised the work done by the two major Jewish groups on the dedication of their temple. The Temple Mount Faithful and the Temple Institute groups had agreed to work together and they had put the temple building together in record time with no expense spared on this monument of blasphemy against the Son of God. The true church went underground and this is their story. Read by Chaplain Bob Walker, September 28, 2019, in anticipation of a war with Iran and its destruction and what will ensue afterwards, making no claim to being a prophet. So, and hopefully the book will be done one day, God willing. All blessings, praise, and honor to Jesus, who is the Christ. In his precious name, amen.